Oh, well, hey, everybody. It's been a while. And that right there is what you call a messy, messy, messy fixture table. But a lot's been going on since we last talked. So why don't we come over here and take a look? Well, I think when we last were chatting, uh, I had made the lower arched tube for the transmission mount. Well, that is now in the car, along with a super duper cool hanger setup. Look at that. Look at that sort of teardroppy kind of a cutout. Completely not needed, but absolutely cool looking. And yes, that's a, it's been walled on the inside there. So the strength has been added back in. But that turned out so cool. It's just lovely. Wait, what? How'd you do that? Oh my God, how could I have done this? But I did. I forgot to do videos, got too excited about building things. So let me take you through this. We start with sketches. In the case of the transaxle hanger, it was more a question of how the brackets were going to attach to the crossbars. We knew we'd have to drop something down to pick up that transmission tab. It was a question of where it needed to be, what it was going to look like, how it was going to be shaped. And a lot of it just came down to the aesthetics that uh, we wanted to have, you know, the look and feel of that particular bracket. In the case of the engine cradle, it was for sure going to be tabs on the firewall, but then it was a determination of, you know, do we need an entire cradle structure that comes back and extends upward to pick up the crossbars? Are the motor mounts going to unbolt from the cradle? Are they going to hinge down? Are they going to be, you know, completely separate items? Are we going to have some kind of cantilever assembly that bolts completely from the chassis and the engine? And in the end, this is what we landed on. For the transaxle hanger, we used a 1x3 rectangular tube notched for the top crossbar, pierced for the lower crossbar, and with a cool cutout down by the fastener, mostly just for style points. This shows a slot, but we ended up using just a standard hole. And then for the engine cradle, we were going to pick up those tabs on the firewall and extend a couple of tubes backwards to some sort of crossbar that ran under the engine, and then have other uh, components that extended up to pick up something on the chassis, but that was still yet to be worked out. Then the two tubes that run back and that little crossbar with the two tabs are necessary to pick up a fourth transaxle mount that's underneath everything on the transaxle. And remember, these are all conceptual at this point. They're not to scale. They're just to give us a good working platform as we start to model things in real life. And with the sketches as a basic framework, I just model some stuff up with cardboard to be sure I like the scale of the components relative to the other pieces that are in the car and started looking at some future designs. You can see out here towards the end of the crossbars, I've got some plans for some future boxing to help strengthen the chassis. Next, I drew up and cut a dimensionally accurate plate that would give us an exact location for everything and provide a basis from which we could draw uh, accurate dimensional drawings to make the final parts. And here's the final drawing. The red lines indicate where pie cuts were made and then those surfaces folded down to create the shape of the hanger. The lower portions you can see are drawn long and they actually wrap all the way around and were fully seam welded to make this beautiful lower portion of the part. Once those parts were actually made, it was into the mill to cut all the holes for the tubes. Here you can see we're using the mill to drive the hole saw because it's a bajillion times easier and more accurate than doing it by hand. This shot gives you a pretty good picture of the lower wrap portion. It almost looks like these things were cast. They're just beautiful. Then we wrap some sheet metal around some tubes to create that inner wall to add that strength back in where the cutout for the fastener was made. Those were then shaved to appropriate height and tack welded in place ahead of final welding. Once that final welding was done, all the surfaces were sanded for final finish. All the radiuses all the way around all the edges were shaped to make it look like it was originally built this way. That started out as a one by three piece of tubing. It's just beautiful. And with all the parts made, they're slip fit back together, positioned in the chassis, everything measured, the hangers tack welded, and then the entire assembly removed, taken to the fixture table, clamped down, and here you can see a spacer block's been inserted to help keep things in position during welding, to prevent any welding distortion. And then the welding commences all TIG welded here as you can see. 
Here's another shot of the part in process and the spacer block having been moved to the other end between the two hangers to prevent welding distortion while the rest of the assembly is being welded. Then the entire hanger and crossbar assembly was placed back in the chassis and everything welded in. It just turned out spectacularly well. Look at that. It's just beautiful. It's just lovely. And uh, so yeah, the motor is actually, well the whole drivetrain is actually not sitting on the jack. You can see the jack is moving around in here. What I've done is I've used some screw jacks to get the motor leveled uh, front to back and side to side to get a position of uh, exactly where it's going to sit in the car so I could work up um, the front mounts. Well, the front mounts and the cradle. So the first thing I had to understand was the relationship between the base of the Ferrari engine mount and the firewall. So I built this jig to simply project forward a location onto the firewall that I could use to understand where I'd need to locate the tabs, where within those tabs the pickup points would need to be for the cradle so that I could position everything at the correct height to support that engine mount. And with that location understood, I made up the first set of firewall tabs. I say the first set because I wasn't exactly sure of the dimensions and the angles. I also wanted to get part of the mount to wrap around underneath the floor, as you can see here on that central tab. And that was a bit of a tricky fit, so I wanted to be sure I had all the dimensions correct in the CAD drawing before I cut the official, quote, final version of these tabs. With all the tab dimensions worked out, I was able to cut all the remaining component pieces of the engine cradle. The rectangular tube you see here being used for the crossbar is the same 1x3 material we used for the transaxle hanger mounts, and the tubes are inch and a quarter 120 wall DOM tubing. Now you've heard me reference DOM tubing before. It stands for drawn over mandrel, and it's the manufacturing process used to create the tube. It results in no weld seam, very, very consistent wall thicknesses throughout the tube. It's required for safety elements like roll cages, and I figured, you know, it's such great material and it's available. So yeah, it's a little bit pricier, but let's use it for the engine cradle too. Then it was back to the mill to prep the tubes to receive the mounting bungs, heading over to the lathe to make the mounting bungs, get them sized, and fit them into the engine cradle tubes. So we got all the pieces of the engine cradle ready to go, and I'm lying in bed one night, and all of a sudden I realize, wait a second, that's not gonna work. And what's not gonna work? Remember those tabs and the temporary bungs? They mount horizontally, which means I'd have four of these to try to slip up into place between fixed tabs with very little clearance between them. And it suddenly struck me the odds of that being simple to do were going to be very, very low. So that required a bit of a redesign. And that redesign is horizontal mounting points. You can see that necessitated a redesign of the tab set as well, but it meant that I could much more easily slip the cradle and of those four front firewall mounting points up into position versus trying to slide them in between those two tabs. So a much better design if a couple steps backwards. And with that design change finalized, it was back to the fixturing table to build the engine cradle. Here's the fixturing assembly I came up with that helped me locate everything and hold it in position while it was all being tacked together. And here you can see the first side engine cradle and that one one by one square tube that's just tacking together each of the tubes, but how it now fits into the horizontal mount approach. And you can see how much simpler that's going to be to slide that up into position when the drivetrain's coming in and out of the car. Much, much better design. And here was an acid test, sort of top-down shot, where you can see the main goals of this whole cradle design. The lower bar is tucked in as far to the left under the engine mount as we could get. And the upper bar is as close to the engine mount plate as we could get it while still clearing the alternator. And everything worked out great. It worked out great. Did I say it worked out great? Man, it worked out great. 
Anyway, and here's here's the cradle in pieces still, but you get the idea. So this is going to be the firewall, and there will be some U-shaped tabs, if you will, with some floors in them that will serve as pickup points for those four bungs. And then that crossbar is going to run across the motor, under the motor, right there in that gap where the little mock-up piece is sitting. And everything is set up height-wise so that the lower level of the tubes will support a skid plate that sits underneath the motor and transmission. So it's coming right along. And now with the positions of everything known, I could tack the crossbar to both sides of the engine cradle. Then it was check for level, make sure everything was positioned correctly before we started playing mock-up in the chassis. Then I finalized the design and cut new versions of the firewall tab set. So with the cradle all tacked together, it was back into the chassis to make sure everything still fit, the clearances were what they were expected to be, etc. And here you can see there's just a little plate at the end I made to hold things in position uh, so the tubes didn't move around because they were only tacked by that little one by one up at the front. Then I designed and cut the side plates for the engine mounts. And here I just had them, couldn't resist, you know, stuffing them in place just to see how things were going to start to look. This all gets very exciting when the pieces start coming together like this. You know, here's the side top view. You get to feel for how things are going to start to look. Again, couldn't be happier with how it was all turning out. And in order to finish the cradle, I had to determine how it was going to mount at the rear. Now you can see on the right hand side, I've just got some cardboard mock-up of what's going to be the hanger off of the suspension console that'll be the pickup point for the rear mount. But that had to be established to understand how I was going to create a mount at that end of the cradle. So with the location and height of the console mount determined, I was able to model up all the components of the rear cradle mount. And here you can see the side plates. And this is the first cut at the gusset that was going to support between the two side plates. But in typical me fashion, I noodled around on different designs for what I wanted that gusset plate to look like. Here's another one. I wanted to try a different one. So I just played around with multiple different designs until I came up with something I liked, which is this one here. This picture also gives you an idea of how the engine mount is going to work. Although that top plate is not going to sit on top of those side plates, it's going to sit down recessed between them. And here's a quick shot of what it takes to get a Ferrari 360 engine mounted into a 914. There's all the pieces of the engine cradle. Then the rear mount components were tacked onto the cradle. This means that the cradle's complete enough to be hung back in the car to verify all the dimensions uh, while making sure it's not going to move around and allow for the engine side plates and top plate to be positioned. Because the lower cradle mount hangs down below the base of the chassis, I wanted to minimize any additional extensions on that. So countersunk the lower bung so that we could run a flathead Allen and just keep as much ground clearance there as possible. And here's a shot of that Allen head in position. This also gives you a, a view of this little spreader plate that was added to the bottom of the floor where that tab set wraps around and ties into it, just to add a bit more strength to that overall assembly. And then everything gets final positioned, tacked in place, measured, squared, aligned, checked, rechecked, triple checked, checked a couple more times. The firewall tabs were final welded to the firewall. Everything on the cradle was final welded. And here it is, hard bolted to the mounts, not supported at the back at all, dead level. Turned out great. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying this. And if you do, please like and subscribe and feel free to enter any comments or questions below. And we'll look forward to talking to you next time. Bye-bye.